This time I was late. <laughs> 60 seconds, it goes so fast. <laughs> but you were here. You were here, prepared, ready. Welcome, welcome. Please come in, take a seat. If you're watching online, do the same. <laughs> take a seat. And um, prepare to search and find Jesus. That's where we're doing it. We're doing Every Sunday, we're doing the service, we're doing church every day of the week. We are church to seek and find God. And he promises us that he will be found. Whenever we say, Jesus, here I am, please touch me, come in to my life, please be my life, then he comes down and he meets. The band prepared, we prayed, we are expectant. Are you? Are you expectant? If you are expectant, ready or not, let's stand up and focus on the one who is here to meet you. The one who is all powerful and all present and he doesn't miss a thing. Also, I want to pass some greetings to you, Pavel 
is preaching in a different church. We have great churches around Limerick, and he's preaching in Snowball Church today. And I'm 100% sure he would dream of doing it in Portuguese. Uh, but with his three sentences, he's not ready yet, so he will be translated over there. But uh, many of you asked me if he was okay. He is fine. I believe it. <laughs> so let's focus on Jesus, and let's do it with all our hearts and all our might. Yes? Ready? Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, church. I don't know how are you feeling today. Maybe you came here today and you are not feeling very well. Maybe you are uh, sad, anxious. Maybe you are very well. Maybe you came here thinking, this is my day and you are happy. There is room for you, for both of you in this place. Um, the song that we are singing now is saying that uh, through Jesus, through Christ, we can do everything. And Paul is the apostle, and he, this is one of his famous phrases. And you know what? He, he wrote this when he was in a prison. And he said that in Jesus, he could do everything. He was facing death in that time. And I want to invite you to make this declaration this afternoon, too, with us. Amen? Let's worship together.
let's celebrate the King of Kings because he's in this room. Amen. I'm not forsaken, never alone. The God of heaven calls me his own. He's not just seated upon the throne. I know he's right here inside my home. I've got a treasure here in my heart. And in my weakness, it won't depart. I have a savior who will abide. He's not just with me, he lives inside. Just go as Daniel, our God will bring you out, and he will testify. He sheds the lion's mouth. Go as those Hebrew boys, if you stick by your side, they will identify the fourth man in the fight. They'll tell you, oh, 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 oh. he's in the room. They'll tell you, oh, the earth below is there if i make my bed in hell is there no matter where i go is there where can i run from his spirit is there where can i go from his presence is there even in the deepest depth is there no matter where i go is there if i search the heavens high is there if i search the earth below is there if i make my bed in hell is there no matter where i go is there where can i go from his spirit is there
the room, you're in the room. You're in the room, Jesus. You're working in this place. You are in this place. You never change, God. You're still the same, God. You are in this room. You are in this room. Touch us, Jesus. Renew our minds, Jesus. Let us have an encounter with you, Jesus. Open our hearts for you, Jesus. Let your spirit flow. Let your power come. Yeah. You never change, God. You never change, God. You stay the same. We stand on your promise, Jesus. We stand on your faithfulness, God. You never change. Oh, you never change. Oh, you never change. Oh, you never change. God never changes.
loved your children then you hear your children now you are the same god you are the same god you answered prayers back then and you will answer now you are the same god you are the same god you were providing the lepers then I feel your touch right now you are the same God you are the same God can you feel his presence in this place he's touching our hearts he's touching our Calling on the Holy Spirit, O oh, mighty river, come and fill me again. Come and fill me again. Come and fill. Spirit, come and fill us right now. Come and release heaven on earth right now. You are in the house. We thank you that you are here, Jesus. And your word says that if we call upon the name of the Lord, we shall be rescued. We shall not be disappointed. Let's call upon him, church, right now. Let's call on his name. There are 
needs in your life, there are needs in my life, and he is here to answer those. We have praised him. We have opened up the atmosphere here, and he inhabits our praises, and he longs to set us free, and he longs to provide, and he longs to protect, and he longs to minister to us, to heal us. Whatever that need is, Lord, we lift that before you. We lift it before you. You are the God who is generous. You are the God who loves us. You are the God who sacrificed your life. By your stripes, we are healed. You took away our diseases. You carried our diseases. You took our sins on the cross. Lord, for condemnation has to go in Jesus' name because you took that on our behalf. Relationships be healed in Jesus' name. Son and mother, father and daughter, whatever that relationship strain is, come and heal, come and restore. Hallelujah. Come and move. Come and give that word of wisdom. Come and give that breakthrough for a job. Come and give that breakthrough for a relationship. Lord, in Jesus' name, we're just coming to you. Hallelujah. Lord, depression must go in the name of Jesus. Lord, if we come in with heavy hearts and with heavy minds and not being totally disorientated, we pray for orientation in the name of Jesus. We pray for alignment with you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just thank you that you are Jesus. Nothing is impossible with you. Absolutely nothing. When we are down, when we've nothing to give you, we call upon your name and you incline your ear and you answer us. Thank you, Jesus. We don't deserve it. We can't earn it. But you give it because you're a loving God, because you're a forgiving God. We love you, Jesus. We just thank you that this prayer is being answered right now in this place. We thank you, Lord, whether it's for ourselves or for our loved ones. We believe your spirit is moving and your kingdom is coming on the earth. Lord, we just believe that lives, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is one day, Lord. This is a special day, Lord, because you're in this day with us. You'll be in it again tomorrow. You'll be in it again on Tuesday. Lord, we just believe that you are moving by your Holy Spirit. And we say thank you, Lord. In faith, we say thank you, Lord. In faith, we say thank you, God, because that is your promise. And we believe in what you say not how we feel. We believe in what you say and not what we think. We believe in the promises of God. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, worship band. Wow. By that second song, he is in the house, got me moving. Did it get you moving? I hope so. It goes down to our the depths of our feet. It's such a powerful, powerful song. All the songs are great to have truth declared in Limerick. Hallelujah. Great to see everybody this afternoon. You're all looking so well, even though you're in the dark, as far as I'm concerned. Of course, you're in the light, but it's just dark in this place. We are starting a new series today called Kingdom Economy. Kingdom Economy. It's based on on the Blessed Life series by Pastor Robert Morris from Gateway Church. And, and we have a relationship with a great Limerick man uh, in Gateway Church, um, Paul Rupert. And uh, he cheers us on, but he cheers not alone Abundant Life on. He cheers various Christian churches in Ireland and throughout Europe as well, because it's such a, a blessing to be uh, in relationship with uh, Pastor Robert Morris and, and Gateway Church. If you haven't uh, looked at that series, you can get it online. It's a life-changing series. It really impacted on my life. Sort of felt I could never get there. It was such a, a challenge, but it has changed me. I still have a, a good bit to go on it, but uh, it's fantastic all together. And really, I want to share three things before we get into the scriptures this afternoon. One is that when we bring a message uh, each Sunday, it's about life change. It's about l our lives changing. It's not just to give us head knowledge. It's about us to be changed through the grace and the love and the instruction of God. This is about biblical formation of our lives through Bible or biblical education and perspective. We've got to get the perspective. The, the scriptures tell us God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. 
but we can get that in this word as we rely on what this says. The scriptures and the Bible, absolutely fantastic. Bible education is the passport for us to see the kingdom of God worked out in our lives here in Limerick, here in the Midwest of Ireland, here in Ireland and in Europe and in the world. The aim of biblical education is not just knowledge, but it's action and life change. And it's not just education of the mind, it's education of the heart. And that is the most powerful weapon that we have to change our world today, is heart change. And it's up to you and it's up to me to sort of align ourselves with God's ways. Not our ways, not my ways, not the world's ways, but God's ways. And we'll see our world change when Holy Spirit come and teach us God's ways today in Jesus' name. Another thing on this isn't just about life change, that's great. But our main motive to talk about the kingdom economy today and for the coming weeks is not to get more money for the church, even though that will happen. We haven't talked about this series for a number of years. And every time we do, we see income coming in, more, more funds coming into the church. That's not our main objective or our main motive. Our main motive is to make disciples of Jesus Christ, is for you and me to become more like the image of God, the image of Jesus Christ. That's what we are made. God put that DNA in us to become more like Jesus, to become generous people and to live a blessed life in and through Jesus Christ. The next thing, just three points, life change, the main motive, and the last one is, and note this, that no matter how generous you are, you cannot earn God's favor, love, or salvation. You cannot, no matter how generous. I remember it being in Krakow with, with Pastor Wojtek of, of Jesus Christ, Church of Jesus Christ in Krakow. And we're walking away from the square, fantastic square in Krakow, and walking down the main street. And he started pointing out, see that house there? See that house there? See that house there? That house doesn't belong to a person. It belongs to the Catholic Church. That house belongs to... Most of, the ch- most of the houses, really expensive houses, very near the square, belong to the Catholic Church because people left their, their premises or left their properties in their will to the Catholic Church with the main motive, uh, that'll help me get into heaven. That'll help me, it'll build up uh, uh, brownie points with God. Listen, let me tell you, no matter how generous you are, you cannot earn God's favor. You cannot earn God's love. You cannot earn salvation. You cannot get into heaven, no matter how generous you are. Having said that, as we obey the word of God, that produces God-likeness in us. It produces generosity in us. It produces a power and authority in our lives that we've never had before. And we're going to look at that today in terms of, of, uh, we're going to look at the principle of first and the power of putting God first. So the principle of first, this is the first of a number of of different uh, messages on on kingdom economy. We're going to look at, it's all about the heart. We're going to look at, in another week, about uh, sowing and reaping and the principle of multiplication. And again, don't miss any of those messages. And it's great to have our messages on uh, YouTube. You can look up the previous ones. Pastor Vinny was here, a great message last week as well. Principle, what do we mean by principle? It's a fundamental truth or the foundation for our belief and our behavior. The principle of first is what we're to- looking at today. And the principle of first asks you and me to answer this question. What or who is first in your life? What or who is first in in your life. Now, it could be Munster Rugby. It could be the Limerick Hurlers. But who or what is first in your life? And because how we handle our finances or our money reveals a lot about our priorities, our loyalties, and our affections. It reveals an awful lot. It reveals our heart attitude. The principle about putting God first and giving God our first Because what happens when we do that, 
blessings flow. Blessings flow for us and for others as well. We give, we want to look at, look at the Old Testament in Exodus because we get, we pull this principle of first from the Old Testament teaching. And that is in Exodus chapter 13. And we look at it here because Moses is raised by God as a leader to bring the people out of slavery. And this is his nation now. And he's forming this people who are going to be his people. They're not going to worship the other gods all around them. They're going to worship Yahweh. And there were two basic, two main things. There were a number of things, but there were two main things that they were to do. And that is they were to celebrate the Passover. And they were also to operate the principle of first or the principle of firstborn. In Exodus 13 and verses 1 and 2, the Lord said to Moses, consecrate to me every firstborn male. We had a dedication in the first service, which is great. A couple were, uh, a family were dedicating their daughter to the Lord. It was fabulous. And to do that, I encourage you, if you haven't dedicated your kids to the Lord, to do that. Consecrate to me every firstborn male, the first offspring of every womb among the Israelites belongs to me, whether human or animal. So God is giving this instruction to Moses that the firstborn, the first offspring, belongs to me. Everything belongs to God. Scripture tells us the, the earth is the Lord's and all it contains, the world and all who dwell in it. And everything belongs to God. He's the owner of our possessions, our property, and our money. And God is plainly declaring that, listen, the first and the firstborn are mine. They belong to me. And that means the first or firstborn is given to, into God's service. You don't sacrifice your son or, or whoever it is on an altar, uh, a person on an altar, but you give them to God's service first. And that's what, what he's saying here. Sixteen times in Scripture, you'll find God declaring that the firstborn is his. It's the principle of the first. In Exodus, in, in the same chapter, chapter 13 of Exodus, and verses 12 and 13, you are to give over to the Lord the first offspring of every womb. All the firstborn males of your livestock belong to the Lord. So he's telling all of these people. There's no exceptions. And he says, redeem with a lamb every firstborn donkey, if you have one. But if you do not redeem, break its neck. Ouch. Redeem every firstborn among your sons. Let me explain that because it's important that we know this principle of the firstborn. In the Old Testament, the firstborn, whether it was animal or whether it was, it was male or, or human being, the firstborn was to either be sacrificed or redeemed. There was no third option. Every time one of the livestock animals delivered its firstborn, you were to sacrifice that to God. But if that animal was an unclean animal, designated by God, these animals are clean, these animals are unclean, such as a donkey, a donkey was unclean, you had to redeem that donkey with a perfect, unblemished lamb. So instead of the donkey being sacrificed, you had to buy it back with a perfect, unblemished lamb. Now, let's move to the New Testament. And we see John the Baptist with his disciples, and he's baptizing by the River Jordan. Along comes Jesus, and John sees Jesus, and he declares, cries out, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So we're seeing here, when you look at that, John is defining the role of, that Jesus is going to fulfill in his coming, his first coming. Jesus is God's firstborn in that sense. He's born, he is God. He, was, he is God's firstborn. And Jesus was clean, he was perfect, he was without sin, he was unblemished. And in every way, he is absolutely perfect. On the other hand, you and me are born unclean. Not a nice word, but we're born with a sinful nature. We're born with, with an active sin, sinful nature. And if you don't believe that, ask the person next to you. <laughs> there are parents here, and you know your little Johnny 
is absolutely fantastic. And you tell Johnny, don't go near the fire. And then he makes his way. What does he do? He wants to touch the fire, doesn't he? Or Mary and has her lovely toy. Will you share that with Jennifer, Mary? No. So you have that sinful, selfish nature right from the beginning. And Paul writes and he says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If you haven't come to that conclusion, you can never be saved. So, looking at this symbolic parallel, we have Jesus Christ, God's spotless Lamb of God. And every one of us are born unclean and with a sinful nature. And Jesus is sacrificed by God to buy us back into God's service and relationship with God. And that's the picture of the firstborn. Jesus comes to fulfill the picture of the firstborn being given to God, putting God first. He was sacrificed. To, to, the word redeem means to buy us back. And he redeemed us by his sacrifice. He bought us back for God. He was literally the first fruits offering in a very real sense. Jesus was God's first, God's tithe. Now let me put on to that as well. And you note this, that God gave his first, he gave his tithe on a cross in faith that we would believe. He gave Jesus on a cross, his, the sacrifice, his first. And none of us believed at that stage. And nobody back then believed. He did it first with having no guarantee that people would actually believe in Jesus Christ and be saved. He gave it first. Romans, Paul writes to Romans in five and, uh, chapter 5 and verse 8, and he says, but God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He died. He was first. And in the same way, we give our first fruits offerings, our tithe. We put God first in much the same way. It's not a law. It's an unchanging principle by an unchanging God. Before we see the blessing of God in giving the first, we give it in faith. We give it without seeing those blessings. Before we know that we're giving to God our first, we don't know what will be at the end of, as we give God our first in a week or in a month we don't know whether we're going to have enough at the end of that month. But we do it in faith. Just like God gave Jesus in faith. The first belongs to God. Exodus 23 and verse 19 says the same thing. Bring the best of the fruits, first fruits of your soil to the house of the Lord your God. To the, the temple, the place of worship. Bring the best. That word best literally means first or beginning. And we see it again in Leviticus 27 and verse 30. A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. It's the principle of the first. We read it, if you look up 1 Samuel chapter 8, and you'll read about Israel wanting a king, and God outlines, if you want a king, the king is going to represent me, and you will give him a, a tenth of your flocks. You will give him the best of your cattle. You will give him the best of your fields and vineyards and grove, and you will give him a tenth of your grain and your vintage. It's all about God first, get the king getting first. It requires and always requires faith to give the first. Because if you have a firstborn lamb, there is no guarantee that if that firstborn lamb is given to God, there's no guarantee that the you who give birth to that will have more lambs after that. So it's given first. And God isn't saying, listen, it's okay. Let the you have nine lambs and I'll take the tenth one. No, he says, give me the first. And that takes faith. It always requires faith to give God 
the first. And that's why many Christians miss out on the blessing of giving God the principle of the first. They miss out on God's blessing in their lives in, in the area of tithing and giving God to the first. Because you and I know, and I, I'm sure you've experienced this, I've certainly experienced this, I, I want to give God this, but will I have enough at the end of the month? I have bills coming in. Will I have enough? And that's the test of our faith. That is the test. And I tell you, and we'll see this in the scripture, because more and more, when you begin to give God your first, when you begin to tithe to God, and many of you are doing that, hallelujah. But by tithing, we are saying, by giving God our first, we're saying, God, I recognize you first. God, I'm putting you first in my life. And I'm trusting you to take care of all the other things after that. We, we, when we move into the New Testament, Jesus gives the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew records it in chapter 6 and verse 33. But before these verses, he says, don't worry about what you're going to wear. Don't worry about where you're going to get food from. I look after the birds of the air. I look after the, 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 the flowers in the field, etc. And he says, he finishes with this. He says, but seek first the kingdom, his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. It takes faith, requires faith to give the first. So do I trust God enough? To give him the first part, to give the first part to him. This answer is a key and very personal question in our lives. And it's the question is, who's really first in your life? Who is first in your life? So that's the, the, the principle. Robert Morris puts it like this. He says, every time we are paid, an inescapable moment of worship immediately, immediately follows. The first place in which we direct a portion of that money reveals something about what is first in our lives. That's the principle of the first. We want to learn about the power of putting God first. Giving our first to God is not because God needs money. He doesn't need. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. But it is simply so that you and I know what it is to be blessed. We know what it is putting God first and seeing the blessings happen time and time and time again. There are so many blessings that go with putting God first, putting our t uh, paying our, our tenth or first to God. It's the principle of putting God first and the principle of faith, and that releases blessings into our lives. Many of us have experienced this, and it's a wonderful, exciting journey to walk on with God. Now, I'm sure there, there are probably a few of us here, and we would put up our hands and say, I, I haven't God first in my life. I, I, I don't know God. I, I, he's not first in my life. And you're honest enough to say that. And it's brilliant that you're here, because you'll be given an opportunity at the end if you want to make Jesus first in your life, that you can do so. We'll have a prayer team and everything here. And, but for most of us, if we were to ask each other, you know, is God first in your life? You'd say you would. Yeah, yeah, God is first in my life. Yeah, he is. Yeah, I go to church, I read my Bible, I do this, I do that. If somebody was to come along and arrest you and want evidence to prove that you are a Christian by looking at your bank statement, would there be enough evidence on your bank statement? Your bank statement was your income, and it is your expenditure, where your money goes. Would there be enough evidence to convict you as a Christian from your bank statement? Would he spot, oh, offering, oh, yeah, giving, yeah, oh, yeah, tithe, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, you're guilty. You're a Christian, you're guilty, definitely. Listen, the principle of first doesn't matter how much you have, how much income you have. It allows every person the opportunity of putting God first. Every person. It isn't a question of, oh, he has more money or she has more money than I have. It's what you have and how you put God first in what you have at the end of the day. Let's look at 1 Kings chapter 17. 
and we'll 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 finish pretty much on this on this uh, story fantastic story altogether the background of 1 kings 17 and we're going to read from verses 8 to 16 the background here is that there's an economic recession there is a famine there is a drought in israel and here you have a situation that theologians say that our, our scripture tells us it's, go, it's for three and a half years. Now, theologians tell us we're about six months to a year into this drought. No rain, okay? Rain, as you experience every single day in Limerick, <laughs> right? No rain. Now, I know what you're saying. You're saying, bring it on, Lord. <laughs> We don't want any more rain. The farmers in Wexford and Carlow and all over Ireland say, no more rain. I don't want any more rain. I want three and a half years of no rain. Bring it on. Listen, if we had six months of no rain, you and I would be turning off the water in our homes. Already, listen, the people of Dublin are, are they're planning ahead, saying, the Dublin population will not have enough water this coming sun, summer if, if the dry periods continue in that summer period like we had last year. And therefore, they want water from our Shannon River <laughs> to be taken from Partine all the way up to Dublin. And that's just the current situation where we've loads of rain. Imagine if we'd three and a half years of drought, we would have to change what we grow. We would have absolute barrenness all over Ireland. We'd be in an awful state. So praise God for the rain. <laughs> Listen, this story. So you've got drought, you've got no rain. And in verse 8, then the word of the Lord came to him, Elijah, go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon, just over the border, and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So when he went to Zarephath, when he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may have a drink? That's a big question to ask a widow in a drought. Give me some water absolute drought and she was going to get it in verse 11 as she was going to get it he called he says you know while you're going bring me please a piece of bread he's really pushing it here as listen watch her response as surely as the Lord your God lives she's recognizing this man to be a representative of God. So it's as if God is asking her the question. And she replied, and this is, this is soul searching, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. If I was in Elijah's Shoes, and I'm sure you would say the same. I said, I am so sorry for asking you. I am sorry I'm going over to Spar to get you some, some, some uh, milk or, or water or whatever and, and a little bit of food. But Elijah says this in verse 13. He says, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first, but first, Make a small loaf for me. How selfish is that? It's not selfish. Not selfish. Go home and do as you say. But first, say after me, but first, make a small loaf of bread for me, the man of God, from what you have, and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. The man of God has to be first. I'm not the man of God, okay, in this situation, okay? It, the, this man is representing God. And here's the challenge. And he goes on, he explains, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. Here's the brilliance 
she went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. This is a disturbing yet amazing story because we have a widow. Widows are absolutely vulnerable. They have got no protection and they've got no uh, provision. They've not got, they don't have a husband. Her husband is dead. She has one son. And that's the only family she has. And she has this, and she just has a little, a little fistful of flour in a recession, in a drought, in a famine, one meal left. And Elijah says to her, Elijah says to her, prepare something for me first. Wow. That is astounding. This man must be crazy. This is just unbelievable that he would. But God had prepared this woman. And this woman obeys what he says. Listen, aren't we ridiculous to be talking about kingdom economy in the middle of a cost of living increase economy that we have and homelessness? I mean, do you feel that pinch, shouldn't you? In these kind of seasons, you, you need to guard the old few bob you have in your pocket. And God is saying, like with the woman, the little that she had, put me first. Put me first. Listen, the best time to speak about this stuff and the best time for you to give and practice the principle of first is in times when there's recession is in times when there's drought, is in times when there's famine, because God comes through in such a supernatural way. Let me tell you that we, there was a recession in Ireland, you remember in 2008, 2009, 10, and that went on for years, where you had a, a situation, people lost jobs. I remember time and time again, we went to the board of directors saying, will we cut back on our wages? We don't know what income is going to come in because people are losing jobs. And, and it's a very difficult situation. And we know that our expenditure, we, wa we watch over our budgets. So do we have to cut back time and time again? We went to the directors, will we cut back on our wages? And they said, no, monitor it as we go along. And we found that the people of God in this church were giving. They were putting the principle of God first, even in the recession. And not alone that, but they were putting money towards a building project, which we didn't know anything about this building at the time. They were putting money in uh, going way above the tide. And, and we realized we were stable during those years. And then in 2013... We looked at buildings all over the place. God gave us a prophetic word, but we didn't listen as well as we should have. And he told us it was around the corner from Post Office Lane. But, of course, no. But, uh, we, we tried every place else in Limerick. <laughs> and we came along and we, we said, okay, uh, 80,000 to rent just this building. And it was a shell. And we'd have to put thousands, hundreds of thousands into it. And it wouldn't be ours at the end of the day. And then... One day in post office lane, I was in the office, Martin Legg throws down a brochure, smits this building up for sale. It cost six, seven million for the guy who bought it. And now it has been offered 550,000. And our people gave into tithes and pledges, like we're doing at the moment, pledges into the building. And we had half the funds to buy this building. Hallelujah. We didn't realize it at the time. We said we're going for it. We don't have the rest of the money. We were going in faith. We really felt God was behind this. And it was incredible because in 2013, we went chasing after this building. And people gave and they gave. In fact, one of the people who was a, a champion of giving is an 83-year-old Mary Dorney. I don't know where she is now. Is she over there? Mary Dorney, incredible. We had various people like Mary giving generously in the church. Let me tell you that, listen, the, Elijah wasn't sent to a rich man. He was sent to a widow. 
who had only a tiny bit left. The, the building funds that came into us, we didn't have a rich man. I know another church in Ireland, they got a gift of a million euro to do up a building. A million euro to do up a building. Good for them. Yeah, it is good for them. But we, we didn't have any rich man to do that for us. The, listen, the funds for building this building, the vast majority came from the congregation because the principle of first was there and the principle of offering was there. Listen, God did not send Elijah to the widow for the widow to provide for Elijah. God sent Elijah to the widow so that God could provide for the widow. She was going to die. And our son was going to die. She'd only a tiny bit to give. But God was giving her an opportunity to put this biblical principle of putting God first with the tiny bit that she had. And when she did that, you see, Elijah was saying, listen, you have one meal left. Your son, you're, you're going to die. And he's saying, will you put God first? And she believed in faith. And she put God first with no guarantees. But listen, when she put God first in her provision, her natural resources, then she had the supernatural provision of God, which lasted all through those years of drought because she put God first. God wants you to experience the power of putting him first. God wants to provide for you supernaturally. It mightn't be all the time supernaturally, but you'll find as you put him first, all these other things will follow because that's what he says. Seek first the kingdom of heaven. I want to just finish with two verses. One is in Malachi chapter 3 and verses 10 and 11. And you'll see as you put God first, he says here, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. That was the temple and they, they, people brought stuff and they, they built up huge amounts uh, for the temple and for the priests. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw out the floodgates, throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be no room enough to store it. Not enough room to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it's ripe, says the Lord Almighty. If See what's happening here. If you bring in the first, the tithe, God is saying, I'll, if you bring in the tithe into the storehouse, I will open the windows of heaven. That's provision. And then he says, I will rebuke the devourer. I, there will be no devouring of your crops. That's protection. And that's what happens when we do it. Listen, we have a natural inkling to hoard or to hold on or to be afraid. Elijah is saying, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Listen, it takes faith to give the first. Now, you, you might say to me that, listen, I, I'll give the way I want to give. I, if I feel like it, I'll give. And if I don't feel like it, I won't give. But God says, this is the way to give. The principle of the first is the way to give. Now, if I was to ask you, you know, do you love your wife? Yeah, I love my wife the way I want to love my wife. I wouldn't get away with that one. <laughs> because scripture tells us how to love our wives. And I can't go, I love my wife the way I feel like loving her. That doesn't work. If you're a follower of Jesus. Or I want to, I'll honor my husband the way I want to honor my husband. No, scripture has it. Loads of information how you should honor your husband. So we can't come along and say, I want to do it my way, not God's way. You know where that leads to. Leads us moving away from God. But when we practice the principle and when we experience the power of putting God first, listen, there's no turning back. You just see a whole new sense of blessing and excitement and, and your giving makes a difference and the kingdom of God begins to come more and more. Last verse, Proverbs chapter 3 and verses 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits 
of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. The principle of putting God first, the principle of giving to God first, the principle of seeking first the kingdom of heaven, the principle of honoring the Lord from the fruits of your increase. That's kingdom economy. That's what we're talking about. And we want you, everybody here, to be blessed. We're seeing kids, even in our kids' church, giving to God. We're seeing our youth giving to God. And we're seeing all the, everybody else attending in this church. There are new people every single week. And you are clicking in to the principle of first. The unchanging principle from an unchanging God. But I want to ask you, the primary question, is God first in your life? Is he first in your life? Or is he down the pecking order? Let's pray. With every head bowed, with every eye closed. This is a wonderful time. If you don't have God first, Jesus first in your life, this is a perfect opportunity because he loves you. He died for you way before he knew you existed or way before you did exist in the flesh, way before you were born. He says, I'm going to lay down my first in faith that you will believe and be born again and experience the kingdom of God in and through your life. And that you will learn about celebrating not the, just the Passover, but the fulfillment of that in Jesus dying on the cross and him rising again. But also fulfilling the principle of the first where we're putting him first in every area and especially in the economic area of our finances. Is he knocking on the door of your heart today? Because the, the handle's on the inside. He, he will not force his way into your life. It's up to you to put him first. And I know he's been working in your life. And I know it isn't circumstances that have brought you here. It's his handiwork that has brought you here. And he's knocking on the door of your heart. And he's saying, I want to be first in your life. I want to lead you in having a blessed life like you've never experienced before that is you, whether you're watching online, whether you're here in the house, with every head bowed, with every eye closed, I'm just going to count to three in a minute and ask you, do you want to put Jesus first in your life? Do you want to invite him in to be your Lord and Savior so that he can cleanse you, so that he can forgive you your sins, and so you can be born again to a whole new life, the blessed life? Is that you? I'm going to ask you to Put up your hands. One, two, three. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His hands going up here. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Anybody else? I'm just going to lead you in a simple prayer. Hallelujah. Here's the prayer. Lord Jesus, you are God's first fruits. God's sacrifice. The Lamb of God takes away my sin I trust in you I want to put you first I open the door of my heart come in I want you first in my life to be my Lord and Savior cleanse me and fill me with your Holy Spirit so I'm born again so I experience the blessed life with you in Jesus name we're going to have our prayer team here. And if you want to come for prayer for any area of your life, maybe you need breakthrough. Maybe you've been through a really tough and difficult time. We would love to minister to you. We would love to, to pray with you. Maybe God has a word for you. And, and, and we will just bless you and you will be blessed. So our prayer time is going to be here. Let's respond as we sing this song. Uh, if God isn't first, <laughs> if you... If you're not, if there isn't enough evidence in your bank account, just say to God, God, bring me there. Bring me there. There's no condemnation. This is biblical education so that we become more like Jesus. 
we become the, in the image of him more and more. But just say that to him. Lord, I want to go there. I want to go there. I want to learn what's the next step for me. Let's do that. Let's stand and respond.
true God. He can never fail us. He's a faithful God. He can never fail us. forgiving oh thank you thank you for meeting us wherever we are at thank you for meeting us here today in Limerick thank you for meeting us wherever we call on you wherever we call on you we just want to praise you Jesus praise you Jesus thank you thank you let's clap for Jesus shall we oh thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Grab your seat for a moment. Some exciting news. If you are here for the first time in person, you are more than welcome. We want you to feel very welcomed, but also informed. So please make sure you grab a welcome box, welcome box prepared specially for you at the information from the information desk uh, right after the service guys we are talking about giving giving um, the term of giving we can put a lot into it you have given your time you have given your um, effort uh, your focus today to the Lord to God also to your family to your friends when you came to church but we're also talking about giving financially and thank you for doing that thank you for being generous always week in week out uh, we continue with doing our pledges for the uh, for the freedom of <laughs> uh, from the uh, mortgage for this building so thank you for doing that uh, on top of that, we're thanking you for being faithful in tithing, giving 10% of your income first to, to the Lord. And also, we want to give you to be generous on top of that. Imagine. Next Sunday, we are having an amazing opportunity to support and give financially to our teenagers. Next Sunday, we are fundraising for Pulse. Pulse is a summer camp we um, send kids to, we send uh, teenagers, my apologies, to. Uh, and this camp is amazing. It's life-changing. Uh, it brings transformation to the teenagers who are participating in it. It's full of fun, no sleep at all. And uh, there is meeting the Holy Spirit there. Oh, I promise you that. I, I've been there. I witnessed that. And uh, teenagers come from it uh, changed, exhausted, and probably needing a shower as well. But this is, this is something we really want to support. So next week, they will be serving in all the ministries I told them, you're, you're signing up for everything except for the preaching. Everything else, they will be serving you guys. They will be selling their baked goods. And obviously, hopefully, the parents will help out on that a bit. Uh, but also, there will be some arty and crafty things to buy. So please come prepare. Don't bake yourself. Take a break from that. Your Sunday dessert 
is going to be sorted and you're going to have this opportunity to give money towards the teenagers. Okay, so next week, come with cash. Another way to support is uh, to participate in this worship night next Saturday in Nina. We are building great relationships around uh, Limerick and uh, uh, County, and we are uh, supporting this church who asked us to do so. So if you are uh, close to Nina or if you just fancy uh, going there and praising Jesus with other Christians, it's going to be an outreach for Nina. Nina is uh, very close to our hearts, so we want to invest in the kingdom of God over there. Our mission uh, team will be supporting that event as well. There will be uh, uh, there will be evangelizing, outreaching during the day. So that's a really great event to participate in. Another thing which is starting for us as the church, as the community, uh, is life groups. We need to sign up for life groups. You cannot be a part of this church if you are not participating in life groups. There is 15 life groups to choose from. Uh, this season lasts until summer, so it's not really a long commitment, but it will be life-changing. You will meet people, you will make friends, you will learn and get closer to God. I can promise you that. Okay, so uh, let's do that. This is the last, time, last day to sign up for all of them, and they're starting this week. Okay, so let me just bless you. Uh, I bless you in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will be led and protected and you will be provided for, but you will be also a provision to many around you. Amen. See you next week. <laughs>